as we discussed in the last video, there are four steps that a consumer takes when he or she decides to buy a product or a service. Step number one is need stage. Step number two is research stage. Step number three is shortlist stage. And step number four is the payment stage. Now, as a marketer, all these stages that a consumer takes presents an opportunity for me or for you to make the consumer aware and influence the consumer to buy my product or service. Now, when the consumer is in the need stage that, okay, I have broken my phone or I want to upgrade my phone. As a marketer, I need to make sure that the consumer is aware about my product or service. Yeah. So for the need stage, as a marketer, I want the consumer to be aware about my product or service. Next, when the consumer is doing research, I as a marketer need to make sure that the consumer has enough resources available online that he or she develops an interest towards my product. Let me give an example. Let's say consumer is searching for phones that are robust, that do not break. At this point of time, think of that ad that Apple had made, wherein the Apple iPhone falls again and again, yet nothing happens to the phone. Let me show you that ad. Now, what does this ad do? Does this ad get you to buy the iPhone? Answer is no. The ad, however, creates an interest inside the consumer that, hey, this phone is robust enough and I can consider it. This is what I mean by developing an interest about my product or service in the minds of the consumer. So when the consumer is researching, you need to create enough resources that get the consumer interested about my product. Next, at the shortlist stage, what should a marketer do? The answer is actually simple. At the shortlist stage, I should create something as a marketer that develops a desire, that develops a desire inside the consumer towards my product. For example, when the consumer is deciding to buy, he or she will look at what are the memory features, what are the cameras, how is the connectivity, does the phone offer 5G or 6G or whatever it is. Now these kind of things are important and they need to be given to the consumer very easily. That is how your product will be shortlisted above other competition when the consumer is at the shortlist stage. So, when the consumer is at the shortlist stage, I as a marketer need to create desire inside the consumer. Now, desire can be created in multiple ways. For example, a lot of companies today are using influencers to promote their product. One such example is here. Did you notice what the influencer did? The influencer highlighted features which helps the consumer make a decision that I want to buy this product. Isn't it fascinating? So that is what I mean by the desire stage. One quick question to all of you. When a consumer is searching for something on Google, is he or she in the awareness stage, the interest stage or the desire stage? We'll get this answer if you see this video till the end. Now, when the consumer is deciding to make a payment, what does the consumer need at that point? Any guesses? Well, at this point of time, the consumer should be given something that will get the consumer to open their wallet and swipe their credit card right then and there. For example, you offer a discount, you offer a rebate, you offer something that the other competition doesn't have. Maybe 5% lower price. Something that gets the consumer to take the decision to buy now. So, when the consumer is at the payment stage, 
you should have something as a marketer that gets the consumer to act to create an action right then and there so these are your first things that you need to do as a marketer awareness interest desire and action well now that's your a i d a model ida model isn't this what we learn as marketers in our first course as marketing absolutely yes and that's when i told you digital marketing is not really different from traditional marketing it's just marketing using traditional forms now you have learned the ida model how are you going to use it how are you going to use it in different contexts how am i going to use it as a sales guy how am i going to use it as a marketer how am i going to use it to develop my website these are the unanswered questions that we are going to answer during the course so keep watching i hope you are loving this course from programming hub keep learning and keep sharing to learn more from us hit on the subscribe button and press the bell icon so that you get the latest updates from programming hub